What's up, guys? Maddie here at MixingMasterMySong.com. Uh, today, I got a special guest, my buddy Cam Meekins. Yo, yo. And we're going to go over a couple uh, techniques on voice recording. You know, the, the best ways to a best mix is to have a good source material. So if you're record, recording in a, in a bad room or with a, a bad setup and not done correctly, it can really have a negative effect on how the mix is going to sound. So the first tip is going to be the actual room you're recording in. Um, before the mic, the expensive mic or the expensive equipment, the room is the most important thing. Cam records a lot of his stuff at his house. Totally. And um, you can talk about some yeah. of the, the trials. It's all about the room because basically when you're, you know, recording, sometimes you're moving around. If you're traveling, maybe you're recording in a hotel room or you're just recording in your at-home studio setup. You're not able to have the most perfectly sound-treated room right. like you would have in a recording studio. So, you know, the, the tips for, for dealing with the room is, you know, trying to look for characteristics that are going to match that, that studio sound, right? right? So if a room is filled up with a lot of couches and, right. you know, there's natural Rugs. things that every room has that might actually affect the sound. So thinking about that when you go into a space uh, and trying to figure out, all right, well, if I put the mic here, is that going to give me my, my, you know, best sound that I can deal with? in this particular situation because you know it's never going to be perfect but you're always looking to tr just try and uh you know give yourself the best foot forward when you're thinking about where you're going to set up the mic and how the room is going to affect the sound yeah. sometimes you have a really open room with a ton of space and you get these crazy reverb sounds and if there's nothing you can do about that then you know you should maybe just think about well uh, I don't you need to use that much reverb on the song or yeah. something like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, I think the best case scenario is if you're recording in a kitchen, it's going to sound horrible. You're going to have echoes bouncing all over. It's going to really affect the sound of the mic, and you won't be able to change it that much after. You can't take away that room sound yeah. once you start mixing. So the, the key, right, is to record somewhere where there's a lot of carpet. A carpeted floor is a huge start. And somewhere that has, you know, a bed or, uh, you know, a couch, like Cam said, somewhere where there's a lot of cushiony stuff mm -hmm. that can soak up the sound and make the room sound as dead as possible. I mean, usually we want, we want a dead sounding room. Fun fact, I always put a bookcase in my studios Yeah. Um, because I've noticed that, like, if you have a whole bunch of books on a bookshelf, it kind of emulates those uh, diffusion walls. Right, right. A little bit. Like, so, like some of the walls. Yeah, like stuff. if you can see, like, cer certain diffusion walls have yeah. those, like, and books naturally kind of do that. Yeah, And yeah. so that's another thing you can fill your studio up with. Yep. It's all about kind of filling up the space. If you can't right. afford to actually get sound panels, you can fill it up with, with other things that, that do a similar effect. Nice, yeah. So that's tip number one. Get a lot of cushiony stuff so your room sounds as dead as possible. The deader it sounds, the better you're going to be able to change it and manipulate it in the mix. All right, so the next tip we're going to talk about is actual mic placement. And I'm going to kind of let Cam run with this one because Cam records himself um, at his studio at his house. So he knows all about this and yeah. I can kind of show you how he goes about it when he's recording. So this is actually my, my microphone and my setup, my pop filter that I use when I'm on the road or when I'm at home. And I'll just kind of show you what I do and the things that I look for. And this actually uh, connects a lot to what we were talking about in the first part. Because part of knowing how to use your vocal on a microphone, you know, it ties into the room. Right. And what I mean by that is if you're standing really far away from the microphone and you're rapping at it or you're singing at it, you're getting more of the room sound 100%. into the microphone. 100%. But when you're closer to the mic it's more of a direct hit of just the vocals and less uh, surrounding room sound. Yeah. So, you know, you're, I mean, you're, you're still dealing with the off the bounce, but for the most part, that's a good rule of thumb is that if you're dealing with a more difficult room, yep. it's better to stand closer to the mic right. and turn your input down a little bit yeah. to make up for the fact that you're really close to the mic. So I usually, rule of thumb, tend to be pretty close to the mic because I just want that consistent level. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to get too much like background sound. So I usually set my pop filter up uh, about a, an inch or two away from the, uh, the, the what's this thing called? Shock mount. Yep. Um, and then, you know, I keep my, my actual mouth, you know, in, another inch or two away from the pop filter, but I'm pretty much right on there. Yeah. And that gives it enough space where you're not, you know, really on top of the mic, but right. you're, you're directly singing right to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much as far as my setup goes for setting up the mic. Those yeah. are my my key things. And that's a huge point. I mean, the closer you can get to the mic, even if you're not in the greatest room, 
it, it's true. The room, the more close you are, the less of the room you're going to pick up. So that's a huge point. And, and that also kind of brings us, you, you talked about the input, it brings us to our third tip, which is actually the gain of the mic, you're on your mic pre. So uh, a problem I've seen a lot of times with a lot of people recording at home are they can't hear themselves. So instead of turning the headphones up or something, what they do is they turn the mic gain up. So the louder your mic gain is, the more room sound you're going to bring into it too. So the key is to record at a lower mic gain. And then what you do, instead of turning the mic gain up to hear yourself, turn the music down. So mm -hmm. a lot of people recording home usually start off with a stereo beat or something and a vocal. Turn your beat down because a lot of producers are sending mm -hmm. their beats out so loud so you actually like them that it's like hard it's it's hard to rap over that. So turn your t your beat 10 dB down yep. before you start getting the input gain, right? It's actually changed my you know, recording like just and mixing just it's it's actually changed everything for me. It's probably the biggest thing as a per person who's recording my own stuff yep. just by myself in my room. It's the biggest most important thing that I never really thought about for most of my career until yeah. I started to understand the like how gain structure works and, and like gain you know and all that yeah right. and so now pretty much exclusively every time if, if i didn't produce the beat myself if i'm just using a two track for for the time being or whatever it is i'm taking the beat down 10 dbs right just in like the the clip gain or on logic there's just a gain right db thing and you just take it down like that you don't have to do it on the fader yeah um and you can just tell right away that the vocals sound so much better because you're you have so much more headroom to, to right, work with. Right. Yeah, that's the other thing too, is if the beat's loud already, it's gonna be clipping your master bus, which is gonna distort everything anyway. Right. Um so yeah, it's really key. It's like a, a lot of people get all sucked up in, in in the gear and everything. And yeah, Cam's got a great mic. He's got a Neumann U eighty seven. But like we could record his vocals with I have a two hundred dollar mic here. We could record it and it'd still sound great because yeah, we're in a studio right now. But just the fact that the room sounds dead, we're not cranking the gain, um, just makes such a huge difference in the actual recording. So, so I say all that to say is, is you guys could have cheap equipment at home and still get a great recording just by following like these tips. Well, you know? 100%. And also, I just want to say that I use the U87 into Apollo Twin now, but my biggest song is a song called Better Days. And I recorded that on a $300 blue mic That's through right. a duet that's right uh yeah. apogee yeah yeah yeah. apogee duet so what that's a 500 dollars. that was setup, a 500 dollar right? setup yeah in a in a in a square room that sounded horrible right <laughs> you know what i mean and but i was able to just use what i could and knew that if i you know really focused on how i was um singing into the microphone like that's a big thing too for for vocal quality that i want to add is just that like don't don't forget to think about how you're using your voice instrument yes. when you're recording yep. and you can do different things with your voice that will affect the microphone in different ways mm -hmm. and so don't be afraid to play around with that yeah. really get comfortable with your microphone listen in your headphones with the microphone on right, right? you know with with the actual input on so you can hear it yeah and kind of learn how your voice sounds on the mic when you do different things yeah and just get really comfortable with what it's supposed to sound like what you like what you don't like and all those types of things Awesome, dude. Cam, thanks so much, bro, for doing the video with me. No I problem. know a lot of the guys who watch uh, the channel are going to really dig this and be able to use a lot of this information. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you need your songs Mixed Master, hit me up at MixedMasterMyStone.com.